Well, that's not supposed to be there. I think we found a, a shank to the duo. We're disking all this up. It must have broke off right here. And that's where it lays. All right, I just want to take a minute and show you why why we I mean mess with all this technology. What actually makes it worthwhile? Uh, this is a 15 acre field that we just planted, and what you're looking at right there is my population map. And if you look at scale here, our lowest population is 15,000 seeds per acre, and then our highest is uh, uh, 30,000 seeds per acre. Uh, and then the, look at the colors. Now, if you look up here in this area, you see where that is orange and red. There's, it's the side of a hill, and there's literally no topsoil whatsoever. In fact, years ago, we didn't even plant it because it was so eroded and just not productive at all. And then you look right here, uh, you see an area of a lot lower population with one little spot of uh, 15,000, extremely low population. And then right here, we got, a, got another one and then right through here we got another one right here we've got two little knolls and i know you really can't see it from uh from here but we got two little knolls and then we got kind of a valley right here and right there years ago all a lot of topsoil washed from this knoll down to here and this knoll down to here so this is a lot deeper soils and a lot more productive soils capable of getting a lot higher yield and capable of supporting a lot higher population now if we just had a straight mechanical planter with a trans transmission uh you know in order to change the planting rate we'd have to get out and adjust the sprockets on the transmission well for this field you know we probably just pick one flat rate of maybe like 24,000 seeds per acre because we're on 38 inch roads. Well, what this uh, technology allows us to do is the ability to variable rate our population as we go across the field. Now, we're running a prescription that I made back during the winter, and this prescription takes into account uh, a tool, what we call a multi-year yield analysis, to where as I take yield maps from previous years, and it analyzes the field for the good spots and the bad spots and then we assign populations accordingly. Higher populations in your better yielding spots and then lower populations in your poorer yielding spots. And then we load it here on the monitor and then as we go across the field, the planter will then variable rate apply how many seeds per acre we're doing. You know, from 15,000 seeds per acre in the red to uh, upwards 29 to 30,000 seeds per acre in the green. And as you see, as we go across this spot, I mean, we're going from probably there around 19, 20,000 seeds per acre right there. And then gradually going up to 29,000 seeds per acre and then back down to uh, you know 20,000 seeds per acre and then back up again to you know, 29, 30,000 seeds per acre. All in the span of about three to 400 feet. And this really lets us maximize how much yield we can get off of every specific acre. I mean, we can be very, very specific and you know the planting rates that we're applying and then i'll use my planting map to then go in and create a nitrogen map to variable rate apply the nitrogen based upon how many plants per acre we have obviously we have more plants per acre higher yield potential we'll need more nitrogen out there uh, where we don't have very many seeds per acre, a lot lower yield potential, we'll have a lot lower rate of nitrogen. And this, uh, you know, helps us be very efficient with our nitrogen and applying only what we need, where we need it to make our desired yield go without either over applying nitrogen across the field and wasting it or under applying nitrogen as we go across the field and thus hurting our overall average yield. Now there are several different ways a planter can have variable rate technology to apply the seed. 
Our planter right here has electric drives on each unit that can uh, individually rotate at different speeds as we're going throughout the field. Just like if we're going around the curve, there's a gy there's a gyrometer on there that uh, uh, can tell how fast the planter is turning and then it will speed up the units on the outside of the curve and lower the speed on the inside units of the curve so we have a very consistent spacing of our seed as we're going around a curve. Also, if we're driving between, if the planter is splitting two different seating zones, each unit can be putting out a different rate according to which, whatever type of zone it's in. Uh, the first variable rate technology was actually hydraulic drive on the planter to where you've got a hydraulic motor taking place of the transmission on the planter because the transmission is ground driven and you'd have a hydraulic motor that could vary that could vary how fast it's turning to turn the shafts on the planter but the limitations with that is is that uh, each unit on the planter is going to be putting out uh, the same population you can vary it as it goes throughout the field but the whole planter is going to be putting out the same population across the board to where is where you get to where you're splitting two different zones uh, you know one zone you might be over applying a, you might be over applying a little bit just depending on exactly where the GPS receiver is located plus it doesn't give you any kind of turn compensation to uh, vary from unit to unit as you're going throughout the field now the benefits of electric drive over hydraulic drive in that kind of situation is kind of splitting hairs but uh, that's just to explain the differences between the two different types of system to variable rate apply your seed you know overall this year i was not all that happy with my aerial seeded cover crops uh, we had i think a lot of it die off from herbicide carryover on our soybean crop due to the drought last year but getting spots that feels like this man boy it is thick and it is beautiful i don't know if maybe the pilot doubled over or whatever man we got some big veg out there a lot of nitrogen production in this area of the field of course it's kind of been trampled down due to uh, uh chicken litter being spread but overall it looks fantastic that's what i love all of it to look like all right so we're moving equipment and i just wanted to show you all the wind it has really gotten bad uh, you can see the trees. So I've halted spraying for a couple of hours. In the meantime, I'm gonna move equipment and um, get Andy going on the fertilizer buggy because he is now empty. So uh, we're gonna fill him up and then move the truck. And then I'm gonna come back and get the sprayer and the water truck and move that back to the shop because I don't have any water left. And I'm gonna wait until this wind calms down because um, this is not spring weather. So hopefully if the weatherman is right around three o'clock or so, it's supposed to, gusts are only supposed to be up to 15 to 20. So that would be much better conditions than it is right now. Also, I couldn't go get him earlier because the county has decided they want to paint the lines on this road and they had it blocked from the other entrance all the way to here for about an hour so we couldn't move anything and I've been riding the yellow line to not get paint on the truck <laughs> even though it's dry I don't trust it hey um the gusts are up to 32 miles an hour and I'm caught up to the point where I'm all I have left is Fisher and then I looked at the forecast and they said it's supposed to die down around three o'clock so I think I'm gonna pick up spraying again around three if that's okay with you Probably. it's it's gotten way worse in the last hour and a half so i don't i don't want to get in trouble and then waste expensive chemicals as well you broke up on me what'd you say Okay, I just didn't know how fast you could catch up, so. I'm not going to be over there by 3 o'clock or so, that's for sure. 
Okay. Um, is there enough fertilizer in the tender to do all of Fisher and? Yeah, there should be more than enough. Okay. That's what we figured. So, but he doesn't need to go past Campbell Home Place, right? Because he's almost done over here. Uh, he, he needs to keep on running. I need, I need to know as soon as the fertilizer tender is empty, he needs to get his empty as soon as he can so I can get some more fertilizer ordered today because he's got a dentist appointment tomorrow morning. We'll have two teeth pulled. and don't tell him how long he's going to be out. So, I need him to get as far ahead as he can today. Okay. Well, then I'll try and um, help him do that for the next two hours so we can get more fertilizer then. I mean, it should be pretty, pretty dang close to get, get the empty. Over corner closes at around 3 o'clock or so, so I'll go ahead and call Matt and tell him to go ahead and be, be sending the guy up this way to pick the tender truck up. It'll take him probably, probably about an hour to get here. Okay, that'll work. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, look at there. I found my pocket knife. I thought it was lost. It was hidden down here in a crack between the seats. It made my day. Not only are we having a good day running, I found my pocket knife that I thought I lost. Yeah. We moving on along. We're just about uh, done uh, over here with this variety. We got about another uh, 15 acres left and then we'll be uh, going back towards the shop. We're just gonna stop in there, fill up with our next variety of seeds so we don't have to load it on a trailer and head on to the next field. I'm gonna do my best to get it done before I go home tonight. It's gonna to be about 60 acres. So, uh, so far we, uh, we knock in on the door of around uh, 80 acres for the day. Not bad, not bad at all. Well, look over there. That, I don't think there's many prettier things in life than a field of wheat that is headed out blowing in the breeze. That's not my wheat over there, uh, but it's it's definitely some good looking wheat. I sure wouldn't mind pulling my combine off and cutting it for them if they needed me to. I tell you what, springtime in West Tennessee sure can be pretty. You give this field right here about another uh, 48 hours, it's going to be uh, very stark contrast to that wheat field. This is going to be crispy and brown because with all this sunlight, it's not going to take that on very long to work on it. It's going to be dead real quick. Anyway, I'll see y'all back at the shop and uh, show you the next variety we're putting in the planter. I'm really excited about that one. Can't wait to see what it's going to do. So it's now almost four o'clock. Um, the guy from co-op came and got the truck to go get um, any more fertilizer and then um, he'll bring it back here when Andy needs more fertilizer I will have to go pick him up somehow between trying to spray down the street and um, him <laughs> kind of wish I had a permanent uber out here uh, unfortunately Carter is two years away from a license um, I'm about to fill back up so I can go spray this one farm and then I'll come back here, get the water truck ready for tomorrow, probably top the sprayer off with fuel and then see where Andy's at. And by that time, I don't know, it might be six or seven. And then I think Matt is going to come back here because I've also brought the truck back with the seed, but I think he has to get more seed out of there. So I'm just kind of like waiting. I do my job and then I help you know, Andy with moving equipment and getting him done. And then if Matt needs seed or he needs to have a truck left or a service truck. So I'm kind of the do all of whatever. That's where we're at. And the wind has died down some. So I'm confident I can go spray this farm and um, not waste chemicals or kill anything that's not supposed to be killed. So that's the plan for the next couple of hours. All right, what we got here, we're going to have a little competition. We're going to have our first uh, Pioneer of the Year mixed in with some decal. Now, it's not really going to be a competition uh, uh, 
got our refuge corn here, Pioneer. Last year, uh, production for this variety, unfortunately, I have, my dealer really had to scramble to come up with these bags. It's our uh, uh, long season 118 day refuge. Then we got uh, some decal 6744 on the back. Being a top yielder and plots for uh, quite a few years, never had planted any, so really excited to uh, plant some this year. It's gonna be on some of our better ground. So uh, y'all know the drill. It's gonna be in rows three, seven, and 10. And then our 6744 is going to be in the rest of them. I know it's starting to get a little dim, but man, look at that cover crop right there. That's the way a cover crop is supposed to look. And look, after I planted it, look how matted down it is because of all that vetch in there. Man, that's gonna be a good spot of corn right there with all that vetch and nitrogen and cover. Woo! Man, that, this whole field looks looks like that. Too bad it's gonna be uh, getting dark here soon and won't be able to see all of it, but I don't know what happened different on this field rather than, rather than my other fields, but when I do my plan on my cover crop and what I hope to plant into, that's a prime example of what I'm shooting for. So I just got back about an hour ago and helped Matt load up the um, planter. It was rough. Now I'm gonna get Carter to help me and we're gonna Take all these bags of seed that's in the gin and put them on the back of the trailer if he would get off the four-wheeler. <laughs> so we loaded that up in the planter. Like I put that back and then Carter and I get to load all of those bags that say Pioneer onto the trailer. He's my help. So that's what we're about to do. Let me show you what a good sign is. You gotta get out and clean vetch off the planter. I love seeing that right there. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of free nitrogen down there in that soil for that corn crop. We're gonna have some green uh, decal 6744 on this farm. Just checking to make sure none of my furrow force is uh, starting to wrap up with all this viney vetch out here, but. Now they all look good and clean. Of course, all my row cleaners up there are Martin Razor wheels and they're designed for cover crop. Uh, you know, they're not gonna wrap up. They got a backing plate on the back of them that knocks the cover crop off the wheels as it rotates around. So this is exactly why I built this planter the way I did, to plant into these kinds of conditions and do a perfect job. All right, we done with this side of the creek. We gonna head on over to the other side of the creek and see how long I can keep my eyes open. All right, that is it for today. I'm tired and I'm hungry. Didn't quite make it down with this farm. We like about another 16, 17 acres and it'd be well past midnight when I got done. As it is, it ain't too far from 11 o'clock. So I was hoping to get done with this and not have to drive all the way back down here to finish up this farm tomorrow. Well, all the way, two miles down the road. But I can't do no more. Anyway, we had a, had a heck of a day running. See, we got uh, 
142 acres covered today. Pretty dang good considering I had to fill up a seed twice, changed farms a couple times, and uh, had a few small fields to contend with. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have another real good day. Go and have a little bit bigger fields to do tomorrow. But anyway, I'll bring y'all back out here in the morning. Proper lubrication is the key to maximum performance. That's your pro tip of the day. See that? Yeah, that whole tree was all the way out to there. And I uh, moved it by myself. The things I do for the farm. I used to go to a gym when literally this is your gym. I'm probably gonna go die later, but uh, I fought the tree and I won today. So I hope Matt appreciates it. All right, back on the road again this morning. Uh, so far been a pretty productive morning, uh, even though we've been down a man. You know, Andy's at the dentist office having some painful work done. Oh, poor guy. Got everything serviced. Uh, had just a little bit of fixing to do on the planter. Had a disc opener get loose on me. Uh, Kelly's loaded up, got all of her stuff, moved to the next farms, and uh, got back out to the field, and all before 8.30. Not a bad morning. Well, we got about, uh, I think we got about 15, 17 acres left on this farm, and then we'll be uh, moving down the road our last farm in Crockett County farm I've, I've been looking forward to planting for for a while ever since we did some uh work on it this spring so i'll bring you back then and, and we'll see what it looks like when we're planting into a little bit different conditions than, than this right here it is 10 o'clock i've already sprayed i think it's like 45 acres uh, i've got this left to do and then i have to backtrack i have to go back to a 20 acre farm that um he had dissed up Spray that and then head into town. I hate driving this thing in town. I hate all the farms in our town, not because of the landlords, because of the traffic. So I also have a doctor's appointment that I've been avoiding, I know, for uh, three weeks. And today I couldn't avoid it any longer, so I have to go this afternoon. And then after I get done with that, uh, I think I have to help Andy move, and then I think we're going to be moving other stuff. And see how it goes. That's all I got. Um, same thing with me. Spring until I don't have to spray anymore, and then run around like a chicken with its head cut off trying to get everything else done. So It is a very beautiful day, though. Very excited. The wind is calm. So thank you, Mother Nature. Uh, I've also seen five turkey hens which would really tick off my son and one tom uh turkeys really do love the cover crop they will bed down in there and actually unfortunately they will start uh, making nests and laying their eggs in there um specifically more with the cotton so i bet you i find a bunch right back there so i try to avoid them because you know i don't, I don't like hurting animals so um yeah, that's it for me. Hopefully I won't have to fight another tree because I don't think I have it in me right now. It's not even 10 o'clock and I'm tired. So, <laughs> back to spraying a go. All right, before we get on next field, uh, for the farmers out there, I need to bring something to your attention. I don't know about y'all, but I'm about fed up with all these ag companies pushing all these snake oil treatments on us charge a lot of money and they don't work and a lot of times unless unless you know exactly what you're asking for they get included on the product without you even asking for it and you get charged for it uh take this nitrogen that uh andy's spreading for example we're spreading urea and ammonium sulfate well with the warm temperatures moisture in the ground urea needs to be treated with a nitrification inhibitor 
Otherwise, it can gas off into the atmosphere because we're not incorporated and not expecting to rain for several days. I'm not going to mention any names of, of companies because I really like this company. They've done me a fantastic job, great service, whatever. And I know it's not the company that's pushing this product. It's coming down from up high of the, you know, the owner of the, the big company in itself. You know, the, uh, all the upper management. It's not the people at this business, and I've got no problem with them whatsoever. But anyway, uh, this was completely my fault. Uh, the first load of nitrogen that we got out here was treated with a product called Nutrisphere, which is now being rebranded as InCharge. And it's supposed to be a nitrification inhibitor. Well, to my knowledge, there's only been one active ingredient that works extremely well as a nitrification inhibitor. It's a uh, NBPT is a short name for it. Well, Nutrisphere does not contain NBT, NBPT, it contains something else. And it's been proven over and over again by university studies that it does not prevent the nitrogen from gassing off and going back into the atmosphere. There's been a couple studies that show that it does help increase yield, but the vast majority of university replicated tests show that it does not inhibit nitrification. And uh, I know that this uh, company has been pushing this product a long time. In fact, all of the urea that they sell comes pre-treated with Nutrisphere, unless you specifically ask for something different, even though the product doesn't work. It adds about $75 per ton to the cost of the nitrogen. Anyway, the first load came treated with Nutrisphere because I it slipped my mind. I forgot to ask that I get my nitrogen treated with Agrotain or a generic equivalent that contains NBPT, which actually does work extremely well. Well, anyway, after further investigation, I did some research online and looking at labels and everything. Come to find out that this Nutrisphere or New Charge or In Charge, whatever you want to call it, whatever the current name is, is the exact same active ingredient as another product that company sells called Avail, which is supposed to uh, uh, be applied to a phosphorus fertilizer like DAP to make it to where the phosphorus is more available to the crop when you apply. And what this Avail is supposed to do is keep the phosphorus that you apply in your fertilizer to keep it from getting tied up with a soil colloid and keep it and, and make sure that it's uh, you know, in the uh, water solution in the soil and available to the plant. And I think there's actually been research showing that it actually does do that. But tell me, how can the exact same active ingredient prevent nitrification of uh, nitrogen and also make phosphorus more available in the soil? It's not the same process whatsoever. There's different uh, there's different processes involved, different bacteria involved. You know, the main thing of NB, NBPT, it prevents bacteria from emitting a, a urease a chemical, which is what causes nitrogen to change forms and gas off. It, it just burns me up with the false marketing and advertising of an expensive product that, you know, a lot of folks that if you don't do your research, you know, you'll fall for it. I've fallen for it in the past, not just for this product, but plenty of other products. You know, all these snake oils, they say, uh, well, we'll get you an extra two or three uh, bushels an acre, but it only cost you one and a half or two bushels an acre to, to buy the product. And then they'll show you like one test where it actually worked. But if you look uh, at long-term data, you know, the success rate of that product is, you know, it, it's going to cost you more money in the long run than what it'll actually make you. You know, this, this goes above and beyond that where a product is marketed as doing something and it does not do it whatsoever. And it's, like, it, it's not just this one company that, that does it. You know, all ag companies have their own portfolio of products and a lot of them are false advertised. Uh, you know, a lot of them make claims about stuff that it doesn't actually do. So the one thing I encourage any farmers that are watching here is before you try a product out, do your research on that product. Do not believe the manufacturer's claims of what it will do. Look for independent data. 
uh, preferably, you know, university replicated data over a multi-year period to find out if it's going to do what it's advertised to do. And when it comes to a lot of these snake oils that, you know, claims of two, three, five bushels an acre increase, unless that product actually addresses a limiting factor on your farm, you're not going to see any yield increase from it at all either. I know, you know, before I changed my philosophy 10, 10 years or so ago, you know, I was young, I was naive, you know, I, I believed people when they told me something. And then I started testing a lot of the products out ourselves and found out a lot of the claims that these companies make about their products, it's either blatantly false or it's just not going to work in our situation to help increase yield. And now, you know, every, every year, you know, especially because we're on YouTube and we're visible, you know, I've got quite a few companies that have started approaching me, hey, try our product out. You know, we think it'll fit good with your farm or whatever. And I, and I tell every single one of them, I'll be glad to try your product out. Give me a little bit of a product so I can put in a replicated plot and I can see for myself if it's actually worth spending the money on. And that research that we've done over the course of the last 10 or so years or so has saved us a bunch of money and not, and, and not wasting money on these products that don't do anything. You know, you add, you add enough, uh, you know, three, four, five dollar an acre products to your uh, lineup that you actually use. I mean, before you know it, you know, you've added another 20, 30, 50 dollars an acre to your input cost on producing the crop. And in a lot of cases, that's money that's just flying off with the wind. It's not going to be going back in your bank account in extra yield.